past the main market and got my visa renewed at a motorcycle shop, oddly enough. I had still some time left in the afternoon, so I walked down to the riverfront to relax. And as I walked further along, I noticed a lot of amazing architecture. Some of it classical Khmer in style, and some of it more the European colonial style. I also discovered an interesting custom here in Phnom Penh. Now apparently you just, they catch these birds and then you release them so you can feel good about yourself. But then they just go catch them all over again, so it's kind of a racket. There is a large cluster of buildings that I found was in fact the palace. So the next day, I bought a ticket and entered the palace to look around. It had many things that palaces in Southeast Asia have. Wall paintings, some palace treasures, impressive architecture. After a few hours of looking around, I came to a few conclusions. Well, it's a bit of a warm day, and uh, it's a pretty interesting palace, but it's a lot like other palaces I've seen, like the one in Bangkok or in uh, Java, the Karatan at uh, Jogjakarta. A lot of nice buildings, most of which you can't get into, and so you just kind of hang out in the open, barren courtyards and sweat. Anyways, I don't know if it was worth the six bucks, but if you're going to come to Phnom Penh, this is of course one of the places you have to visit, so give it a shot. After this, however, a friend of mine from university connected me with her sister and a couple of her other friends. And they took me around to some places in the city that were a bit off the usual tourist track. Classical Roman architecture in Phnom Penh. Slightly incongruous, but interesting nonetheless, eh? Well, not quite what I was expecting. The next day I wandered through the market, taking in the sights and the uh, smells. Then I stumbled into a temple, where they were performing some sort of special ceremony. One of the monks found me, and showed me the inside of one of the temples. It used to be a very old temple. It's kind of like the temples I used to see in Indonesia. You can see the tool marks on the stone. However, the children didn't seem too impressed, and had better things to do. My time in Phnom Penh had been rather enjoyable. However, it was time for me to leave. So the next morning, I was back on my way to Saigon. And then from Saigon, on to Hanoi itself. Well, here I am in front of the Saigon Opera House. I just got done with a six hour trip and I have another six hour wait until my flight leaves at about 9.30. And after that, I'll get into Hanoi at about uh, at least in Hanoi, the city, at about 1, 1 a.m., so it's going to be a long day. I arrived in Hanoi early, early in the morning, and note to self, next time, work for a company that can help you get your visa done. could save you a lot of time and expense. Lesson learned. It. Yeah, you, you get twenty dollars an hour, right? Uh, maybe I don't know. That's, I get I get half and half. That's ten. a little ambitious. <laughs>
Lamda city in Lamdin Plateau, Lamdong province was listed in top 10 best places to visit in Vietnam by some renowned travel websites in early 2014. The city has cool weather all year round. Coming here you can admire the beauty of gorgeous landscape, French-styled villas and immense pine forests. De La is also known as the city of flowers with fog-covered valleys. Green trees and favorable location are what tourists keep in mind when selecting a place to stay in their journey. Anamondarville is Dilat is such an ideal place. As the resort is located on Lille Street, you can easily visit other places of interest in the city. A seven-har resort with 17 villas, three to six bedrooms each, is suitable for families or groups of friends. Dilat is known as a city of fine forests, flowers and fresh air. An Anamondar Villas de Lat is often likened to a small de Lat. Staying here you can enjoy the beauty of green pine forests and assorted flowers. And have a gorgeous view of the poetic city. This resort has a hot water pool, a rare thing in the foggy city of Galat. Walking up in the morning tourists can come here to inhale pure air into their chests and swim in the warm water to re-energize themselves for the trip around Galat. The well-equipped villa will definitely give you excellent comfort to make your trip a perfect one. Battises were about I, the last king of the Guyen dynasty, and the feudal time of Vietnam worked and stayed. Located on Truvi at Vuong Street, the Battises is right in the middle of I and Forest, two kilometers from the center of Dilak to the southwest. It was built on a fine hill, 1,539 meters high. During 1933-1938 as a summer villa for Cambodai. The two-story palace has 25 bedrooms. The first floor is where Cambodai held meetings and parties. His working room has a lot of military seals, imperial seals, credentials and national flags of foreign countries, 
that had relations with Vietnam. You can also find the busts of Can Bao Dai and Can Hai Din here. The western style of the building is shown in its front and back flower gardens. Like the second palace, this one has an imposing architecture, with a flat roof in harmonious patterns. There are a lot of well-kept ornamental trees here. Roses which come into bloom all year round or a large pot of flowers in front of the palace. Small paths leading tourists to different corners of the palace are hidden amid pine trees running alternatively with green lawn. Like the second palace, this one has an imposing architecture with a flat roof and harmonious patterns. There is car porch in front of the palace. The sitting room offices, the library, the creation rooms, and a big dining room can be found on the first floor. In particular, all offices are nicely decorated and connected with outside space, via doors and steel framed windows. The Embroidery Gallery is located at number 258 Mayan Dao Street, Dalat City, Lam Duong. Coming here tourists can explore traditional manual embroidery of Dalat. The excellent combination of music, poetry, painting and architecture creates the second hue right in the heart of Dalat. Artistic embroidery paintings are placed cleverly in the whole space of the gallery. Visitors to XQ Embroidery Gallery can easily find private corners to enjoy the quintessence of Vietnamese culture. The artisans breathe life and traditions into embroidery stitches in a quiet space. The working place of embroiderers helps domestic and foreign tourists know more about a traditional and noble craft of Vietnam. The gallery is where embroidery is honored and taught to learners by up to 2,000 artisans. Foreigners show nothing but admiration for Vietnamese embroiderers when enjoying the paintings.
was first called Hongadila. It covers an area of roughly 1,900 SQM at number 3 Hindthuk Gang Street, Ward 4, Dalat City. It was listed as one of the world's 10 most bizarre buildings in the People Daily. The design of the building does not follow any architectural criteria, but the wish of the owner. Architect Zhang B. Etbo, who looks towards the harmony between humans and nature. The freestyle architecture makes the whole villa similar to a stump or a part of a wild animal. Roughly made windows with strange shapes seem to be placed at random. But together, they look like eyes of animal at the second look. Tourists can see the garden with a giant iron spider net right at the entrance. Walking through snaking staircases around the stumps, they can see cozy rooms with such familiar things as bamboos, guards, tigers, bears, eagles, kangaroos, pheasants, etc. These rooms are arranged neatly in concrete stumps, creating a strange forest full of mysteries. If you sleep here at night, you can see the moon and stars right above. is truly the city of flowers. Coming here you can see lots of colorful flowers on the street, on the fence, in the park around the fountain and top of towers. Dalat is famous for a range of species of orchid. Some are brought here from the forest, some from a port, and some others are hybrids. There are species of orchid whose flowers can come into bloom for two months. Or those with simple look and color but special fragrance. Flower Festival is held annually when the Western New Year comes. The event is the venue of art activities aimed at introducing flowers. From different localities nationwide and it has attached millions of tourists. Dilap is also the form that supplies assorted vegetables to other cities and provinces. Thanks to favorable weather and fertile soil, Dilap people can grow a lot of high-quality vegetables and fruit. 
So, a strawberry field is definitely a nice place to see here in Dalat. Located about 15 kilometers from the center of Dalat to the northwest. The Golden Valley was open to tourists in 2005. The valley attracts tourists with beautiful Danke Lake and Golden Stream and romantic artificial structures. Danke Lake at the foot of Langbiang Mountain is an artificial lake that provides water for Dalat City. Surrounded by an immense pine forest and a 170 hog grass hill, the Golden Valley is a special ecotourism area. The pine forest and grass hill make up a perfect background for the flowers, stones, lake and waterfall of the site. Tourists can see artificial stream, about 1 km long, on the hill with nicely placed stones. The stream is divided into two brooks named Chin and Duong. Standing on the slope of the hill, you can see a calm lake with rows of pine trees that look like an ink wash painting. You can also lie on the meadow, listening to the wind singing in the pine forests and the laughers of campers somewhere far away. The hustle and bustle of life seem all disappear when we are here. Lake was formed when people made a big dump across the valley in 1972, made the site even more romantic to couples nationwide. Tourists can follow tracks or climb hundreds of steps through flower gates to reach the top of Vongan Hill. Standing here, you can have a panorama of the Valley of Love with lots of sails. Located 7 kilometers away from the city center, this valley is one of the most poetic sites of the Lat. Amlai Waterfall is a place near the Valley of Love that we should not forget. As it is not too far from the city center to the valley, most visitors to Dalat come here. As a part of Kamla Stream, Gamlai Waterfall is about 30 meters high. It does not have a big flow in dry season. But when the rainy season comes its splashing waters create a steady pattern of endless rhythm. Pine trees and flowers beautify the waterfall. The sound of the wind in the waterfall brings pleasure to tourists and make the place a gorgeous picture in poetry. Perhaps the position of Gamlai Waterfall is what makes it special. While natural landscape is often located in remote places, Gamlai Waterfall is just next to a crowded residential area. It seems that you can walk only several steps away from the hectic city to get into amazing tranquility and admire majestic nature. This is the surprise for so many tourists. Many waterfalls in the most poetic city of the plateau has been changed to serve tourists but Gamlai Waterfall remains intact with its natural beauty.
attracting so many nature lovers in their journey to Dalat.